We're speaking this morning on Midwest Sports Saturday with Kevin Rogers, a former Henderson State quarterback, 2011 through 2014. Kevin, it's Rivalry Weekend, and no doubt about it, I'm sure in your mind, Rivalry Weekend definitely and will always entail the Battle of the Ravine. Talk about getting to play in such a historic rivalry like that. Oh, uh, Joey, you know, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. I uh, appreciate the work that you do and, and uh, shining some light on this game. I always thought that this game deserved more um, recognition than it always got. And uh, I really love, this is one of my favorite games to play all year. Um, and it was one of my first big breakout games. And so it has a special <laughs> place in my heart <laughs> and as it does with many people. And so it's just different. Um, and you really don't know, um, you don't know what it feels like until you're a part of it or until you go and see a game. I mean, the, the whole town shuts down. Uh, and for me personally, the, the school's rooting for you. Um, and there's a little bit of trash talk from the other side, as you see <laughs> other people from the other school throughout the, throughout the town. And so that, that brings some, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of fun to it and, um, and a different angle, a different perspective than other schools. Um, but I loved it. They're this, my favorite game of the whole year. I think my first time that I was a part of it was 2010. And then I played in the game in 2011 and, um, it's one of those that you always look forward to. I mean, as a quarterback, you had to take things game by game. But once you got to this this game, you know, there was a different level. So for me, it's probably my favorite game of, of the year. Well, the 2011 game, uh, a tight matchup, a classic win for Henderson State. As a matter of fact, during your time there, you went 3-1 and one, uh, as, mm -hmm. uh, as the starting quarterback for the Reddies over the Tigers in this rivalry matchup. I think about 2011, classic matchup. I look back to 2013 as this game mm -hmm. started to become something a little more on my radar, and a triple mm -hmm. overtime victory, 60 to 52. Uh, that just is a phenomenal rivalry game. Just overall, that that's that's an instant classic as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, 2011 was it was interesting because I was younger and I was a redshirt freshman, and um, so I had to make sure I was prepared personally and that my eyes weren't too big for, for the lights that night. Um, and then I just did what my coaches taught me to do and, and relied on my teammates. And so when it came down to the wire, that was my first experience with it. And I said, Oh boy, here we go. Next, you know, three more years of this. I don't know if I can handle this. And so the next year, um, I believe we won uh, by a good amount. I think watch was rebuilding that year. Then the next year, the 2013, the game, that you're talking about was absolutely hands down one of the best games of my career that I've been a part of. I mean, it just was back and forth. Um, I think it goes down as one of the greatest in history. And at that point I had been more comfortable with the offense, uh, more comfortable with my teammates. And I think things were really coming together. Um, but it, it got to a point where we went to the first overtime. Once they went down and scored and we or kicked the field goal, we went into overtime and it was, okay, all right, you know, we've been in an overtime game before. We know what that feels like. And then we go to the second overtime, and they <laughs> score. We score, they score, we go to the third overtime. And there's just a point, I remember after that game, uh, just kneeling at the middle of the field with uh, when Coach Max was talking at the end and just feeling completely exhausted, like I've just given everything that I have and uh, I couldn't give any more. And um, I hadn't felt that way before. And it was it was an amazing feeling of being victorious, but also just a – a hard-fought battle. So you're right. That was one of the best in history. Speaking now with Kevin Rogers, one of the most prolific passing quarterbacks, not only in GAC history, but also in Arkansas college football history and, and realistically in, in Division II history, more than 13,000 passing yards. Ridiculous numbers, Kevin. I could go into all of those and, and – well, it'd take more time than we have on the show today, so we'll we'll stick with the rivalry right now and, and just say <laughs> you threw the ball really well, all right, and and specifically in those games as well. Uh, you mentioned trash talk even around town, and not everyone has a rivalry game, and there are some schools like this. There are some setups where the, the rivalry is within the, the city itself. This is one of those, but you, you cross the street, to play the football game, and that's something that really is like no other. Talk about walking across the street to play this game. Uh, Joey, that's a that's a great feeling um, and also unique. The week leading up to it, um, you know, all the, I'll say monuments are covered in tarp just so to protect from 
from uh, vand- <laughs> vandalism and other <laughs> other acts. You know, it's it's taken many years for us to learn that we finally covered up the monuments just to protect against vandalism. But um, I mean, we we go to church with people across the street. We go to uh, classes together, and we see each other a lot. Or during the off season, we may have. Uh, the players get together and have kind of a, a joint practice or we may, you know, run routes and because and, we're, we're there to get better together. We're there um, and we have things in common. But that week, it's just, we're all, you know, we're poking fun at each other. We'll see each other at the gas station. And and <laughs> it's like <laughs> if I see if I see a defensive lineman, it's like, hey, you better, you know, watch your back. I'm going to get you this week. Or, you know, it's you know, we just kind of poke each other back and forth. And so um, that's one unique aspect about it. But walking across the street, I mean, they – I remember specifically, and at this point, uh, the dorms weren't built on that fil- uh, that field by the stadium, and so it was still just an open field, and they had a kind of a carnival set up that day. Um, and so I remember walking across, and all the families would kind of line up, the band would line up, and uh, the police would block off that highway right there, and you would just you'd be in your uniform walking across the street, and everybody would be rooting you on, and, and you know that that you're about to go to a big game and, and this is kind of a big showdown and you're preparing yourself mentally. And I just remember feeling like, like all eyes were on you or were on us as a team. Um, and I don't know that, you know, it's really hard to replace that feeling or to um, recreate that. So it really is something special uh, to be a part of for sure. In this year's matchup, it's a little bit different for Reddy's fans as, as Henderson state has many times uh, had a, a conference championship on the line specifically in the years of the great american conference now and that's not the case this year washita is already locked up the conference championship uh, with with its record henderson state has the opportunity this year uh, to play a spoiler role but more than that also uh, a win picks up a winning record for the season as well what would you say if you were talking to these players prior to the game in in this this year's matchup that's going to be uh, absolutely. So, I mean, first off, congrats to Wachita and, and what they've done. That's, that's a feat uh, in and of itself. But that, that's the other thing about this game. And what I would tell my players uh, if, I, if I was the coach is, um, listen, this is just another football game. But, <laughs> but at the same time, we have a chance to improve ourselves as a team, ourselves as players, and use this as a stepping stone and a launching point for next season, which is the experience that I had in 2011. Um, I had a good game and figure out, figure some things out towards the end and really use that to get better in the off season. And not only that, this is bragging rights for three, in the next 364 days. <laughs> yes. If you're going to, you know, when we're, when we're talking about seeing these players at the gas station or um, at church on Sunday, you know, are you going to be able to say something back to them? Or are you going to have the winning argument that, Hey, remember that game where we had the, here was a score and, and we win for the next, the rest of the year, or <laughs> are you going to have to swallow that pill and, and, and think about next year? So this is all on the line for us. We have nothing to lose. We don't have a playoff spot that we're playing for. So we might as well just go out here, give it our all and, uh, and see what happens. And that's the thing with the game is that anything can happen. I think we played this part in 2011 where we were the upset um, or the underdog team. And we ended up upsetting OBU and, invite you know it's happened to us vice versa so it's you can throw the records out the window and it's i really think it's going to be a great matchup you know it's funny i was about to ask you that question i've I've heard that said many times about rivalry games and i wanted to see if that was how you felt about it is this one of those where you do throw the records out the window and and it's all about this game i think i think so now again you can't predict the future obviously and you can't um you know, we don't know what's going to happen or what the mindset of the players are. But I really do think you can throw the records out the window because anything can happen. Um, you know, Stametti, the quarterback for HSU and the offense, they can all figure it out and they can throw 60 points up on the scoreboard and the defense can shut out the Tigers and, and they come away with the win and they might figure it out. Or um, Watchtaw might have them figured out and, they might throw 60 points on the board. You just really don't know where it could be close. Um, I mean, the way that these coaches, both Coach Knight and Coach Maxfield, prepare their players is, uh, I think, well above average and extraordinary. And they know each other on top of that, and they know their tendencies. So they know – and I think that's what makes it – really takes it to the next level and, and allows you to throw those records out the window. 
We've had an opportunity today to speak with Kevin Rogers, former quarterback for Henderson State for the Reddies, 3-1 and one in the Battle of the Ravine. Kevin, thank you so much for taking time with us today. We appreciate uh, your being a part of Midwest Sports Saturday today in this rivalry weekend. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Joey, and uh, looking forward to more in the future, and have a, have a great day.